At the far end of England, a land of rocks and moorland stretches itself out into a blue-green sea. Between its high headlands lie tiny sheltering harbours, where the fishing boats hide when the winter storms are blowing. One of these harbours is so small, and the entrance between its great stone breakwaters is so narrow, that fishermen called it the Mouse Hole. The people who lived in the cottages around the harbour grew fond of the name, and they call their village Mouse Hole to this day. They say it in the Cornish way, Mousel, but you may say it as you choose. Once there lived in the village a cat whose name was Mauser. She had an old cottage with a window overlooking the harbour, an old rocking chair with patchwork cushions, and an old fisherman named Tom. Mauser had had many kittens in her time, but they had all grown up and left home. Her eldest son kept the inn on the quayside. It was noisy and smoky, and his man had once spilled beer on Mauser's head as he was drawing a pint. Oh, I won't today. Sorry, cat. <laughs> so she did not go there very often. One of her daughters kept the shop on the corner. It was busy and crowded, and her lady had once stepped on Mauser's tail as she was weighing out some vegetables. Sorry, cat. So. She did not go there very often either. Sometimes, Mauser felt that her children had not trained their people properly. Her own pet, Old Tom, was very well behaved. He never spilled the cream when he was filling her saucer. He always stoked the range to a beautiful golden glow. He rocked the rocking chair at just the right speed. He knew the exact spot behind her left ear where Mauser liked to be tickled. What was more, he never wasted his time drawing pints of beer or weighing out vegetables. When he was not looking after Mauser, he passed the day in the most useful way possible. He took his little boat through the narrow opening between the great breakwaters out into the blue green sea and caught fish for Mauser's dinner. Mauser was very partial to a plate of fresh fish. In fact, she never ate anything else. But she liked a little variety. So on Mondays they made morgi broth, Mauser's favorite fish stew. On Tuesdays they baked hake and topped it with golden mashed potatoes. On Wednesdays, they cooked kedgeri with delicious smoked ling. On Thursdays, they grilled fair maids, a mouth-watering meal. On Fridays, they fried launces with a knob of butter and a squeeze of lemon. On Saturdays, they soused scad with vinegar and onions. And on Sundays they made stargazy pie with prime pilchards in pastry. All in all, Mauser's days passed very pleasantly. Then one year there came a terrible winter. At the far end of England, the blue green sea turned grey and black. The great storm cat is stirring, thought Mauser, as she watched at her window. The wind whined like a wild thing about the higher headlands. It came hunting the fishing boats in their hidden harbors. When the great storm cat is howling, thought Mauser, it is best to stay snug indoors by a friendly fire. The sea drew itself up into giant waves 
and flung itself against the great breakwaters. All along the coast of Cornwall, the stone wall stood the shock. Then the sea sucked up its strength again and roared right over them, sinking the sailing boats in their home havens. But it could not get into the mouse hole. Mauser watched as the great storm cat clawed with his giant cat's paw through the gap in the harbour wall. But it was too small. He snarled and leaped up at the great breakwater under the lowering sky. But it was too high. The fishing boats sat safe as mice in their own mouse hole. But they could not get out. And because the fishermen could not fish, there was no more food. They ate up the few vegetables that were left in their storm-wracked gardens. They ate up the salted pilchards that were left in the cellars. Mauser hated vegetables, and the pilchards were too salty for her taste. Soon, there was nothing left. The cats and their people grew very hungry. Mauser sat by her window, staring out at the storm and thought longingly of morgy broth and stargazy pie. Every day the fishermen gathered on the quayside, and sometimes they would try to take a boat out through the mouse hole. But always the great storm cat lay in wait for them, and they were lucky to escape with their lives. Then at last one evening, as old Tom sat with Mauser on his knee, she felt him take a deep sigh. Oh, Mauser, my handsome, he said, for he was a courteous and well-spoken man. Mauser, my handsome, it will soon be Christmas, and no man can stand by at Christmas and see the children starve. Someone must go fishing, come what may, and I think it must be me. We cannot be the young men, for they have wives and children and mothers to weep for them if they do not return. But my wife and parents are dead long since, and my children are grown and gone. Mauser purred to tell him that she understood, for it was the same with her. I shall go out tomorrow, Mauser, my handsome, said the old man and I shall not come back without a catch. Mauser purred louder to tell him that she would go with him. For he was only a man, she thought, and men were like mice in the paws of the great storm cat. Besides, she knew that if he did not come back, she would not much care to live in her cottage without him. There would be no one to pour the cream, or stoke up the range, or rock the rocking chair. There would be no one in all the world who knew just where she liked to be tickled, behind her left ear. Tomorrow night, Moser, my handsome, he said, we shall eat morgy, broth, baked hake, ling and launces, fair maids, soused scad, and stargazy pie. Then Mauser purred as if she would burst to tell him that she loved him more than any of these things. The next morning, they set out very early before the others were waking. Before they went, Tom stoked up the old range and damped it down so that it would burn steadily until they returned. Then he hung a lamp in the window so that it would shine out across the harbour and light their way. As they reached the quayside, Mauser looked back through the wind and rain and thought how warm and welcoming the window looked. Soon their little boat was crossing the harbour towards the mouse hole gap and the voice of the great storm cat rose all around them like a giant caterwauling. As she
she listened to his wailing, Mauser felt a sudden strange sadness for him. How lonely he must be, she thought, endlessly hunting the men mice in the deeps of darkness, and never returning to the rosy glow of a red-hot range. And her kind heart was moved to comfort him. Many a tomcat had Mauser tamed in her time with the sweetness of her singing. Now she lifted her head and sang like a siren, joining her call with the cry of the great storm cat. that he was taken off guard as the little boat made its bid for freedom. Soothed by the sweetness of Mauser's serenade, the great storm cat paused in his prowling and pulled back his giant cat's paw for a mere moment. Swiftly, the little boat passed through the mouse hole and out into the open sea. Then the great storm cat played with them as a cat plays with a mouse. He would let them loose for a little as they fought their way towards the fishing grounds. Then down would come his giant cat's paw in a flurry of foam and water. But he did not yet strike to sink them, for that would have spoiled his sport. When they reached the fishing grounds, the sea was so rough that it was hard to put out the nets. I fancy you must sing again, Mauser, my handsome, said Tom, for your voice seems to soothe the sea like the sirens of old. So Mauser sang again, longer and louder than she had ever sung before. Indeed, old Tom was forced to block up his ears so that her siren song should not distract him from the business of fishing. in his play and sang with her until the nets were safely shot. they fished in a seething sea. The waves were so high and the clouds so low that they soon lost sight of the shore. And all the time, the great storm cat played with the little boat, striking it and then loosing it, but never quite sinking it. And whenever his claws grew too sharp, Mauser would sing to him to soften the edge of his anger. As evening came down, they hauled in the nets. Into the belly of the boat tumbled Ling and Launces, Scad, Hake and Fairmaids. Enough fish for a whole cauldron of morgy broth, enough pilchards for half a hundred stargazy pies. Moser, my handsome, we are all saved said old Tom, if we can but bring this hall home to harbour. 
but Mauser knew that the great storm cat would strike when he saw them run for the shelter of the mouse hole. She knew that the game serves only to sharpen the appetite for the feast to follow. It is his meal or mine, thought Mauser, as she looked at the floundering fish in the belly of the boat. Blue, green and silver, they glistened in the greyness. It made her mouth water to look at them. As she thought of the morgy broth murmuring on top of the range, the stargazy pie growing golden in the oven, Mauser began to purr. And her purring rose like a hymn to home, above the noise of the great storm cats howling. Such music had not reached the ears of the great storm cat since the dawn of time. For when do cats purr out in the wind and the darkness? Puzzled, he paused in his howling, bending his ear to catch the strange sound. It seemed to him that he had once heard such a song long before, when he was no more than a storm kitten. The great storm cat grew quiet. Gone was his hunger for hunting, for making his meal of the mice men. Only the pleasure of the purring remained. Then the great storm cat began to purr with Mauser, and as the soft sun grew, the winds waned, and the waves weakened. Night fell boat sailed back across a slackening sea. As they came in sight of home, a strange sight met their eyes. The whole village of Mousehole was shining with light, and lanterns gleamed along both arms of the harbour. For when the people of Mousehole had woken to find old Tom's boat missing and a light left in his window, they knew that he had gone out to find fish for them, or to perish on the deep water. All day they had watched and waited, staring out into the cloud-racked sea, but they could see no sign of him. And when night fell, the women went home and set candles in all their windows, and every man lit his lantern and went down to the harbour walls. As they waited and watched, they saw that the wind was dying and that the sea was growing calm. The dark clouds lifted and a thin moon shone out between them. And in the light of the thin moon, they saw a small boat coming and behind it, came the smallest, tamest storm kitten of a wind. As old Tom and Mauser came through the mousehole gap, a sudden breeze caught them. A tiny, playful cat's paw, like a gesture of farewell. There was a great deal of cooking in mousehole that night. The people made a whole cauldron of morgy broth. They baked hake, cooked kedgery, grilled fair maids, fried launces, soused scad. They baked half a hundred stargazy pies. Then people and cats, they feasted together until the hunger was no more than a memory. And every year since that day, at the inn on the quayside, the people of Mousehold hold a fish feast on the night before Christmas Eve and raise their glasses to the memory of old Tom. An 
And every year, in the yard at the back of the inn, the cats of Mousehole gather and raise a great howling to the memory of old Mouser. And every year, folk come from all over Cornwall at Christmas time to see Mousehole lit up with a thousand lights. Shining their message of hope and a safe haven to all those who pass in peril of the sea. Let's go with Mouser the Cat for a walk around Mousehole Village. Can you make your hands move softly and carefully, like cat's paws? First, we'll go through the cottage door and down the steps. Past the lobster pots, You can smell fresh fish, so twitch your whiskers. <laughs> and look, old Tom is mending his fishing nets. So let's stop for a moment to say hello. And then off we go again, through the gate and down to the quayside. There's an inn here with lots of noisy people. It's smoky and it smells of beer and there are big feet everywhere. <coughs> Let's try the corner shop. Perhaps it's a bit quieter there. Can you smell the vegetables? Carrots, cabbages, potatoes. But there are still great big feet everywhere. <laughs> ah well, time to head back home. Make your cat's paws run quickly past the boats in the harbour. Past the fishing nets and the lobster pots. Next, it's up the steps and through your cottage door. And into the warm kitchen. There's morgy broth on the stove. And your rocking chair is rocking at just the right speed. And now, see if you can join in with the song Mouser sings to calm the howling storm cat. Remember, just like Mouser, you'll purr and meow quietly and softly. Or, if you like, just hum along.
The sea is full of life. All sorts of life. How many words do you know for things that grow and swim there? Seaweed. Seashells. Jellyfish. Starfish. Have a go at saying some of those words again and say some of your own words for life under the sea. Up in the sky over the harbour, the seagulls are calling from up in the clouds. Try putting your thumbs together so that your hands and fingers make seagulls' wings and let them fly, going up, swooping down and hovering in the air. And let your hands slowly drift apart like wispy clouds, fingertips wiggling in the sea breeze. And now, back to the watery sea again. I wonder if you can make your hands move up and down in patterns, like waves rising and falling. Sometimes they're calm and smooth and gentle. Sometimes the waves are restless and choppy. And sometimes the waves are angry and rough and stormy, rising up high and crashing down low. Your old Tom now, out fishing. Think of some actions to do for different ways you might catch fish. You could hold a fishing rod and line and carefully swing it over your shoulder. Swish, splish. Or you might be out in your boat reaching your arms out to cast your fishing net over the side. Splosh. Or you could slowly pull in a lobster pot. What do you think's underwater, under Tom's boat? With the next music, have a go at some actions for different creatures under the sea. Little shrimps that chase about, perhaps. Or fish that glide and shiver. Or sea anemones waving their fingery tentacles about. Why not say some words for the actions you make under the sea? Next, the storm cat is on the prowl, out at sea. As you listen, you can join in by whistling like the wind. 
or drumming on your knees. Or making wave shapes with your storm cat claws. <laughs> On the night before Christmas Eve, there's a fish feast in Mousehole when everyone remembers the story of old Tom and all the cats howl to the memory of old Mouser. So, just softly, why not join in? Boat come home over water, boat come home, turn around. Boat come home through the weather, sail home safe and sound. Out at sea, storm cat growing, paw and claw on the prowl. Out at sea, wind is blowing, wind and waves howl and growl. Boat come home over water, boat come home, turn around, boat come home through the weather, sail home safe and sound. All the nets, glistening silver, clouds so low, waves so high. All the nets, hake and pilchard, fish for star gazy pie. Boat come home over water, boat come home, turn around, boat come home through the weather, sail home safe and sound. Blow back home, moon and starlight, through the dark, through the night. Blow back home, home to harbour, lantern shine, window light. Boat come home over water, boat come home, turn around, boat come home through the weather, sail home safe and sound. Boat come home over water, boat come home, turn around, boat come home through the weather, sail home safe and sound.